And some of them in, involve like, well, you could solve it you know, using trigonometric formulas, or you could use all these really beautiful series and, and approach a, a digit of it when you have like the alternating sum of, of, of well, for example, right, um, if you have, uh, uh, do, 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 plus, uh, plus one ninth plus dot dot dot. So if you're just taking the sum of one over n squared, this is pi squared over six, right? So in terms of algorithmic information, it takes, it's almost something is more meaningful when it takes fewer lines to describe it than in this, and then that's the argument here is that if you wanted to code this image into zeros and ones, it would, this image would take roughly the same number of zeros and ones as just a bunch of gibberish, right? And that shows kind of a, a failure of, of information entropy. But the fact that we can write a program like Kern showed you in just a short few lines that produces this, you know, very quickly shows that it's algorithmic information if you're to write a program. Um, is actually much more meaningful. It's not algorithmic entropy, sorry. Um, complexity. And these are just some rigorous mathematical tools which we're using to think about what meaning is and what information is. Um, and you know, I know I really hope I've kind of convinced you that a lot of complex phenomena can come out of very simple things. Yes, Latif. What if we like, uh, look at numbers in general, like real numbers? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because like, when you like, give like, uh, a name to a number. All right, give a name you to a number. Like, you have like, so many like, like, names to give, like, numbers. So yeah. It's sort of like mixing together like different like, um, symbols and everything. But you, or even though, even if you have like an infinite amount of symbols, mm -hmm. you can only like, see, you can like maybe like uh, give each one like a bunch of numbers, like from one, two, three, four, five, five. What, what you'll end up with like an infinite amount of, num amount of numbers, but the map will be introduced or something. But you're trying to map to the reals, and there's more reals than the integers, so you have numbers that you cannot even say what they are. So does, does that like have something to do with the algorithmic complexity? Because some numbers you can't say what they are, therefore they're like not computable. Right. So I mean, what you said does have relation to this, but it's actually you pretty much struck on one of the most fundamental um, theorems and paradoxes in, in the past like 30 or 40 years, um, and I can give you some more information on it, but it's called the lowenheim skolem theorem. And it's the idea that, and it's really, a, it's really an idea on logic. And fundamentally, the paradox which you just said shows how if we really want a theory of meaning, like if we want to be able to point out every real number, but we can only do so in a finite way, how do we know that we actually mean every real number, right? Even though we can do it only in a countable way, what right? Sorry, so Latif was asking about like when you're specifying real numbers, right? So let's take the continuous line from 0 to 1. I know Latif doesn't think this line's continuous, but <laughs> it is. Um, we only have like a certain number of, of well here, I'll, I'll take it to 2 so I can specify. Here's 1. Uh, so for example, the square root of 2. 1.41 dot 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 irrational. Um, infinite digits does not repeat, so there's no real short way, but we only have a finite number of symbols, a countable number of symbols, in fact, using integers to name this number. So how can we ever say square root of 2 when we only ever have a countable number of integers to start spelling it out? All we can ever do is approximate the square root of 2. I could give you square root of 2 out of to a billion, billion digits, and I still wouldn't be giving you square root of 2, right? Um, but it's kind of the, I suppose, and that, but then that relates to a really fundamental paradox, which I can't really talk about because um, it, you know, it's just kind of way out over, over the top. Um, but suppose you had something like, the way we name, sorry, sorry, the, the way we name square root of 2 using mathematics is as whatever x satisfies this equation. And this is really the best we can do, right? But, I mean, the idea that you're striking upon, it really is a fundamental one, and it shouldn't be trifled with. But are there any more questions? Because I think I'm running 
desperately over time. Um, and I'm encouraging you guys to think of these problems. Um, yes? Um, I'm sort of thinking when you have like a Euclidean space, it's so continuous and everything. Right. Um, would you like think of consciousness in a similar way? Of course, it looks continuous, but is it really continuous? So is consciousness continuous? Yeah. Right. So that's a good question because to what extent do we reduce consciousness just to discrete firings of neurons? Right. As opposed to like the subjective feeling that it feels continuous, but just because it feels like something does not mean it is that something. So that's actually a very good idea because um, he said, so just like consciousness, we feel like it's continuous, but suppose it's not really continuous. And one thing to think about is that I think the refresh rate on our eyes is something like 200 frames per second. Um, so, and that's really why we think things are continuous, but like when we start whirling our hand really fast in front of us, we only see it at certain bits, right? But it's kind of from the continuity of our experience, the fact that it happens so fast that we actually say that we approximate saying that it took all the positions in between. So it's kind of lazy. Yeah, well, it's the best we can do, right? It's not good enough. It's not good enough. All right, fair enough. All right, um, so I encourage you guys, uh, it might make the typographical number theory chapter make more sense if you glance over the propositional calculus. But really focus on the typographical number theory chapter. Um, and then start processing that handout for chapter 10 that I gave you. Um, and hopefully in about two lectures time or so, we can make sense more of what Gödel's achievements were and maybe try to connect all of these ideas. But excellent class, guys. I, I really think it, this was good. Thank you.